Okay, good afternoon, directors, staff, guests. <coughs> Wednesday, May 26, 2021. That's Regional District Board Meeting. Confirmation of quorum. We have, I'll call the meeting to order. Adoption of public agenda. Move adoption. Lee, right. to amend it. Second. Chair. Dr. Baker. Okay. <laughs> Director Anderson. Um, I'd like to request a varying of the agenda to put the um, notice of motion at the end of correspondence as it relates to a correspondence item. Do I have a seconder? Second. Yep. Can we just have a see of where that would put it? Just, just, looking. just at the very yeah. end of the agenda. Okay. Okay. I will put it uh, under members' reports. How about that? As you wish, sure. Okay. Any other additions to the agenda? Seeing no call questions, anyone opposed? Seeing none carried. Next item, petition of delegations, Discovery Island uh, Salmon Farm. One, one moment, please, Mr. Chair. There's business arising from minutes. And I have we haven't one. got, we Dr. Haven't Lee, got. we haven't got, we're not. Oh, I'm, excuse me, it's after that, sorry. Kill, kill. So the petition delegation to Discovery Island Farm, Salmon Farms. We have Bonnie Brostein, Ray Greg, and Andrew Coase, I'm assuming. And I understand Mr. Greg is going first. Mr. Greg, welcome and go ahead with your presentation, sir. Thank and you we very allow, much. We allow 10 minutes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, my three minute presentation is divided into two parts the initial impact of salmon farms on the BC ecology, and then Piscine Rio virus. Salmon farms with their open net pens arrived en masse in the 1990s into a West Coast marine wilderness with disastrous effects. Everything that ate fish became an enemy. Mink, otters, eagles, herons, uncounted numbers were killed. Orcas were chased away by underwater acoustic devices, but literally thousands of seals and hundreds of sea lions were shot over the years. This was the food source of transient orcas. Salmon farms were disastrous company for the rich wildlife of a West Coast ecology. Now on to Piscine Rio virus. It's a viral disease that now affects probably about 90% of farm salmon in BC and is probably spread to wild salmon with potentially devastating effects. But this complex subject requires a short biology lesson. The family of viruses called Rio Viridae contain two genera called ortho Rio virus and aqua Rio virus. The aqua virgin infects fish and seems to be ubiquitous, but fairly benign. The ortho version infects birds and mammals, is extremely infectious, and when it gets in the swine or chicken population, it can only be eliminated by culling millions of animals. In a salmon farm in Norway in 1999, fish started dying from a strange disease called heart and skeletal muscle inflammation. It quickly spread to other farms and soon infected the entire industry. A genetic examination identified it as a new genus of Rio Veridae, Piscine Rio virus, which infects fish and possesses the lethal virulence of the ortho Rio virus. This creation was probably the result of feeding infected chicken or pig meat to farm salmon. The viruses combined to um, the attributes of the ortho Rio virus with the acro Rio virus to um, invent a new fish disease called Piscine Rio virus. Then it arrived in BC with imported Atlantic eggs from Norway and has become a mortal threat to our wild salmon populations. That's uh, my three minutes. Thank you. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> I 
Uh, hi, this is Bonnie Brownstein, but it's Angela that's going to talk, but I have to figure out how to get her um, PowerPoint up. So give me just one moment here. A, here, okay. Okay, are you seeing um, her, the PowerPoint now? No, we're not. Um, okay, um, I think, okay, I see it. Actually, I see it here on my screen. Let me just try sharing it. Okay, it's not doing anything. Okay. All right, um, are you seeing it now? No, we're not. Okay, uh, Edith, can you hear me? Would you mind um, running the PowerPoint? Edith? Uh, Edith, can you hear me? Is Edith there? Yep, yeah, she's here. Okay, uh, Edith, uh, would you mind running Angela's PowerPoint? You're gonna uh, click stop sharing. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, perfect. Okay. Here. <clears throat> Edith is working on it. Thank you. Why, why can't we get this up here? I don't know. It didn't work. Well, isn't it this here? The more I, I have. No, it's this one, and I tried it, and I couldn't get it to, to come up. Mr. Chairman, I think Edie's having difficulty, so until she can I get this running, I can show that on my screen, and hopefully that will at okay. least work until we, uh, until we're okay, further. That's super, Doc. Okay. Okay, so your presentation is up now. Oh, perfect. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Angela Koch. And I've had an interest in salmon farms and their environmental impact for many years now. Next slide, please. Do we control? Okay, thank you. Uh, that interest led me to attend the two weeks of aquaculture hearings at the Cohen Commission, where we heard evidence such as one in four salmon farms has a major fish health event every year, and that each farm is capable of producing billions of sea lice. Next screen. High sea lice numbers trigger expensive delousing treatments, something the industry may not want to do if their fish are close to market size, meaning they wouldn't be as vulnerable to lice as say a wild salmon smolt would be. When the industry self-reports their sea lice numbers, they come in consistently lower than we, when DFO does the counts by up to 50%. Next screen. Justice Bruce Cohen gave the industry until November 2020 to clean up their act. He warned if it was proven they were causing more than minimal harm, they'd be kicked out of the Discovery Islands. Risk assessments were to be done to determine the impact the farms were having on wild salmon, but much to everyone's surprise, they never did one for sea lice. While DFO scientists questioned why a lice risk assessment wasn't done, the industry began a campaign of claiming they only cause minimal harm. Next slide. While questions and concerns were coming from within DFO for a sea lice risk assessment, we were watching the industry hydrogen peroxide treatments failing horribly. Next slide. According to DFO, hydrogen peroxide treatments burn off the slimy protective coating on the fish. The fish then release a chemical which attracts sea lice, leading to reinfestation. It's a cruel treatment and stressful for the fish. Death rates are up for days following a treatment. Next slide. The next few slides show lice are developing resistance to freshwater treatments. The more treatments, the more the lice adapt. And they're stressing this can happen very quickly. This diagram shows a delousing boat in Johnstone Strait and you can see they release their treatment water away from the farm. While the industry says all the lice are captured in filters and screens, DFO says they're not able to capture them all. Next screen. 
With lice tolerating lower salinity levels, the fear is they could soon thrive in our brackish water estuaries. These estuaries are the same place wild baby salmon acclimate themselves to salt water after leaving the rivers. Next screen. Again, scientists say to routinely monitor to stay ahead of such a development. Next screen. Studies show sea lice are adapting and becoming resistant to hot water treatments as well. Next screen. So this is something you may have heard about in the news lately, tenacibaculum, a bacteria that causes mouth rot in farmed fish and is having a measurable detrimental impact on wild salmon populations. While DFO told the salmon farmers they withheld this critical information from First Nations who were in talks at the time specifically about farm impacts upon wild salmon. And it appears they withheld the information from the fisheries minister as well. Next slide, please. Tenacibaculum is emanating from the farms in such high concentrations that DFO's Dr. Christy Miller says that simply a farm being stocked with fish was enough to create a risk to migrating wild salmon. It appears the industry's minimal harm mantra has taken a dive off the deep end, and it's why they need to come out of our waters. Jobs will always come and go, but for our wild salmon, extinction is forever. Thank you. Hey, thank you. And is that the end of your presentation? Uh, no, this is Bonnie. I have a presentation. Can we, um, can you close the, uh, the slideshow? Because I'm just going to talk. Okay. Can you see me now? Oh, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll turn the camera on. Okay, there we go. All right, so my name is Bonnie Brownstein. My topic is the need to transition to land-based salmon farms. The big BC salmon farming companies say they don't intend to transition to land farms. I think they're being foolish. BC salmon farmers say that land-based farm, land salmon farms aren't commercially viable and cost 10 times more than open net beds. They say it can't yet be done, but it is being done in the US. For example, the Atlantic Sapphire Farm near Miami, which is already in production. Seafood buyer Daisy Bird supplies many stores in the U.S. Northwest with salmon from this company at retail prices comparable to prices for wild salmon. At these prices, Atlantic Sapphire is making a profit and plans to expand production to 220,000 tons of salmon annually, more than twice BC's annual farmed salmon production. A new reality must be recognized, and a crucial next step in attracting this industry is developing a cohesive plan for making BC competitive, but no such cohesive plan currently exists in BC. Our federal government is waking up to the environmentally devastating effects of open net pens. For the industry to believe it can sidestep this new political reality is willful blindness. Again, Daisy Berg says, consumers are also increasingly looking for products that have a minimal environmental impact. This customer base is willing to pay a little bit more. And I'll close this presentation by telling you about a report published in 2019 by the Fraser Basin Council, which I would be happy to send to you. The title is RAS, Atlantic Salmon Industry on Vancouver Island, Financial Model and Economic Impact Analysis. RAS stands for Recirculating Aquaculture System, e.g. on land. Their analysis is based on RAS facilities located near Campbell River, producing 50,000 tons of salmon annually, about half the total farmed Atlantic salmon production in BC today. They conclude this would be economically feasible. It would create almost 4,000 jobs during construction and 2,700 ongoing jobs. These jobs would more than offset the loss of jobs due to the closure of open net pen salmon farms in the Discovery Islands. A recovery in wild salmon populations following removal of ocean-based salmon farms could lead to a recovery of commercial and recreational fishing, the jobs created in these sectors plus land-based farming 
would far exceed the number of jobs lost due to closure of the ocean-based operations. Angela, could you just tell them about what's happening in the Broughtons as far as uh, recovery of the fish? Um, I think it's that there's no active farms in Okasolo Channel. And uh, on Sunday, I talked with a couple of uh, people who monitor, they, they test the smolts for sea lice every year, they do samples, and they said they're seeing a 95% reduction in sea lice. So last year, each, each smolt that they caught had an average of nine sea lice on them. And this year, in 50 fish, there was a total of nine sea lice in 50 fish. So that's really good news for us. Yeah, and that's, that's the end of our presentation. Excellent, thank you. So on the presentation, uh, motion to receive. Member seat. Mr. Lee, seconder. Second, Davis. Mr. Davis, thank you. I'll call question on receipt. Is anyone opposed? I'm opposed. Thank you. Evans opposed. Cornfield, Evans opposed. Dahl opposed. All opposed. On receipt, I'll call carried. Thank you very any much questions? for your presentation. Is there any questions? Yes. Director, Director Abram. Okay, thank you. And thank you, Ray, Bonnie, Angela. Excuse me. The question was called on the motion already. Yeah, question has been called on the motion. We've, we've received it. She has a question on the presentation. Yes, that's what I was responding to was your comment. Are there questions on the presentation? Correct. Did you not say that? Yes, okay. go ahead. Thank you. Um, you stand corrected, Charlie. Okay. Um, I first am not asking a question first. I'm thanking uh, Ray Grigg, Angela Coach, and Bonnie Brownstein for making the presentation, first of all, and uh, to keeping pretty much within the time um, to cover a huge topic. Um, the question I have is of Ray Grigg. Um, I'm not going to attempt to pronounce the, the two types of virus, Ray, but um, you did mention, I believe that, I think I heard you say that um, it's happening in the farm fish and is it also being documented in wild fish? And first of all, that, I'll let you answer that part. Is it is it being documented in Wild fish also. <clears throat> excuse me, it was first, <clears throat> excuse me, it was first documented in um, wild fish in Cultus Lake. And um, also um, it's been documented in, um, in Fraser River fish, unspawned fish, and um, in Chinook salmon. And Piscine Rio virus is, um, is widespread, but it's difficult to find it in its active form because of what is called heart and skeletal muscle inflammation. These um, fish who are infected with the initial symptoms of Piscine Rio virus <clears throat> are debilitated and they very yeah. soon die. So probably it's not that easy finding actually active Piscine Rio virus in wild salmon because they die before okay. they can be found. Okay, okay. and then the second part, second part of the question is, um, if they are in wild fish, um, it turns out that they are, um, you meant you were talking about birds populations, and uh, would that uh, be transferable? Is the, is the virus transferable to bird populations such as, you know, eagles, herons, etc., all of the other um, yeah. birds that we see standing around in river mouths? No, the, the ortho rio virus um, that was transferred, um, that got mixed with 
aquariovirus produced piscine reovirus, which seems to be exclusive to fish. But um, okay. what it does, of course, is it has the virulence of what is called bird flu and what is called swine flu that does infect birds and mammals. So in effect, your, the answer to your question is no, it doesn't seem to. Um, but it came from the same Rio Verde source of uh, viruses that actually produced the Piscine Rio virus. Okay, okay thank, thank you. you very much. Okay, and Director Anderson. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you to the presenters for your time and attention. Um, two questions, or really the same question in, in two different ways. I'm wondering what you are hoping that the Strathcona Regional District Board will do with the information that you have, what kind of action you would like us to take. Um, you will see that sure. after a, another presentation that the board received a couple of months ago, I have a notice of motion um, coming at the end of the meeting with regards to supporting the federal government's decision. I note that there's a, an item of correspondence before us today uh, from Sierra Club about um, uh, old growth logging, et cetera, um, which is related. I'm wondering if any of you are the authors of that and if it's linked. Thank you, Mr. Chair. There's, I, I, I'm I not don't sure. see any. Yeah, I don't see any ask here at all from from the petitioners. They were just doing a presentation. Well, um, and, and but that's what I, why I am specifically asking because very rarely do we have a delegation that comes just to give us information that is irrelevant to us. There's very often an attached request um, okay. as elected leaders to either petition senior government or do something given our leadership role. And I'm asking specifically if they have a request of the regional district okay. board, Mr. Chairman. Okay, um, well, I don't recall seeing any other requests from the previous one, but if Bonnie's got a request, go ahead. Uh, let me answer uh, Director Anderson's uh, question. Uh, we did not come with a specific request, but now we hear there is a motion at the end of this meeting that the SRD should support the federal uh, DFO minister's decision. And that's certainly what we would like to support. That's what we're asking the SRD board to do, at the very least, to remain neutral. Okay. Does that Thank answer? You. Thank, Thank you. Director Cornfield. Thank you, Chair. Um, to Mr. Greg, what year were these eggs reported or imported from Norway? They were imported over the course of years, actually, from. No, what year in specifically, please? Uh, probably about 1990, about uh, probably 2003, thereabouts, after the Piscine Rio virus was established in Norway. And, and that's how it got in the eggs, and that's how it got into British and Columbia. What, what year was the ban implemented by the federal government on importation of eggs from Scotland, Norway, and other areas? I can only tell you that it was imposed after the eggs were imported to British Columbia. Well, I seem to remember that ban coming into effect in the 1990s. Um, the uh, person that made the comments on the economics of sea la or uh, land-based aquaculture, you mentioned an RAS facility near Campbell River. The uh, introduction? Uh, no, no, I, uh, I'm sorry, may I respond? Hope so. Okay. Yes. Um, uh, no, this is a, this, what I was talking about is a feasibility study. It was done by an organization called the Fraser Basin Council, or it was, uh, so no, it is not in production. Yeah, I'm okay. familiar with Fraser Basin Council stuff. Uh, so there is no production facility up and running at this time? Uh, no, that's not correct. Uh, there are two in British Columbia. There's one in uh, run by the no. Nam First Nation 
in the north end of Vancouver Island, and there's one in Agassiz near Vancouver, which supplies uh, land-based, land-raised coho to the Prairie Province market. Right now, does the one at Nimkish, run by Namgis First Nation, is it economically viable? Yes. It's strange that no one has come out and been able to prove that yet. Well, you're asking. Okay. I, Okay, I'm going to cut it off. We're, we're getting a debate here, guys. So, if there's no other well, further questions, just, I, one, I'm going to one move on. Final, one final one, Chair, seeing as how you gave everybody else yep. the option to speak, and that is, do you believe that wild salmon recovery will bounce back if the, if the fish farms were removed? Uh, yes, we do be believe that. Uh, Populations, as Angela said in the last thing, the last point that we made, populations already are bouncing back in the Okasolo, right? No, the the I believe her report was based on the number of sea lice seen on the small fish now versus uh, last year. Does not does not make a recovery of a fish population any more viable. Okay. Uh, if the, the juvenile salmon don't have the sea lice, then they're much more likely to survive, and that's what's happening now. They're surviving to get to the Fraser. But not to adulthood. Okay. Uh, we don't know that yet. It hasn't, the season isn't that far along. Thank you. Thank okay. you. All right. Excellent. Thank you, everybody. Uh, that's the end of the questions on this. So, again, I'll thank our presenters for your presentation, your delegation today. Much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. We'll carry on. Item E, adoption of the minutes for the meeting May 12th. Move adoption, Davis. Director Second, Davis. Evans. Second by Director Evans. Any errors, omissions? Call questions. Anyone opposed? Seeing none carried. On to F, business arising from the minutes. Is there any business arising from the minutes? Director Lee, did you have something? Oh, I just had one minor amendment to the minutes, and that was on page two, the notice of motion from Director Anderson. There's one typo on the last line of that. It's just minor. Yeah, you can tell us what the typo is. I think it's of and if. I think that's what it was on the last line. Okay, thank you. Anything else in front minutes? See none, I'll call questions. Anyone opposed? See none carried. No public considerations, no motion. We moved on to later on. Chair's report. Uh, the only thing I've got really is AVICC coming Thursday early evening and Friday for those uh, directors attending. I look forward to it. Lots of resolutions on the table. Um, that's really all I've got for the chair's report. So motion received by verbal. Director Evans, did you have your hand up? Yes, yeah, sure. uh, Chair, I just want to add that voting ends today at 3 p.m. You got that right. Thank you. Already voted, so I forgot about that part. Super. Move the chair's report. Director Baker er, and second Wally. was Director Wally. Yeah. Anyone opposed? It's okay. Carried. On to committee chair report, Selectual Area Service Committee report. Draft minutes for May 12th. Motion received. Second. Abram and Lee. Any discussion? See none, I'll call questions. Anyone opposed? Carried. Item two, Strathcona Gardens Commission report. Motion received minutes, May 12th. Remember, remember seat. Director Lee, Director Wally. Any errors, omissions? See none. I'll call questions. Anyone opposed? Carried. Next general report, staff reports. Number one, OCP rezoning consultation process. Freedom Move Ventures. Motion received. Move Anderson. Second. Second. Second by Director Wally. Any discussion on receipt? I'll call questions. Anyone opposed? All carried. Item B, the first station consultation process, the agency referral list as outlined in the staff report. 
May 6 for the application of CP1B21RZ1B21 Treaty Ventures be approved with the addition of the Coloco First Nations Band. So moved, Anderson. Thank you, Director Anderson. Seconder. Second, Wallet. Director Wally. All the electoral areas only. Is anyone opposed? Seeing none carried. Item two, OCP rezoning consultation, Oyster Bay lands. Motion to receive the report. My receipt. Second. Lee, second. Second. Mr. Wally. CEO, anything to add? Nothing to add, Mr. Chair. Thank you. On receipt, I'll call questions. Anyone opposed? Seeing none carried. Item B, electoral areas only. Motion Mr. Received. Chair. Mr. Chair, on B, um, the recommendation from the Electoral Area Committee was for a significant number of agencies, uh, more than what's being presented to the board today. It looks like the staff have eliminated some of the recommendations from the committee, and I would like this recommendation to go back to the committee. I don't want to belabor the board discussing why they eliminated certain agencies from the referral list but I'd like to talk to them about it at electoral areas. So I'd move a uh, referral to electoral area committee. Second, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, I may be able to um, intervene here. Okay. Um, it's, it's described in the report. There was a number of referrals that were redundant to referrals we already had. So there was no need to write them in twice. So that was included in the report. I okay. saw the report, but I would like further explanation at the committee, and I don't want to belabor it at the board here. Okay. Um, I would like to refer it back to the Electoral Area Committee, please. Okay. Mr. Chair, you the seat. It's uh, been moved and seconded. Okay. Mr. Chairman, you are right. in the seat of uh, the um, report uh, currently on the floor. Okay, I've, I've, I've sent, we're still on receipt. I did tend to refer from her. I have not. Uh, Director Abram seconded, but I did not recognize that at this time. So, Director Lee, you want to refer this back to East, correct? Yes, please. I would like to discuss Sack. with them. Director Abram has seconded. It's referred. We'll call question referral. Is anyone opposed? I, I have my hand up, Mr. Chair. Director Anderson, go ahead. To speak. On, on appropriateness, um, it is my understanding from the report as confirmed by staff that there are no omissions, that this is simply a list that uh, specifically that the director from the area provided in addition to the referral agencies that staff already uh, outlined. So I would ask if Director Lee, if there's any omissions to please let us know. Otherwise, I don't think it's appropriate to delay this a month. So that's appropriateness, Mr. Chair. Okay. So that's okay, a question. Right. I would uh, I would like to well, support the director if she could answer the question. Otherwise, I'll have to vote against it. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, yeah, the list was twice as long that was at the committee, yeah. and the staff have chosen to eliminate some of the agencies. Okay. And I think it's Mr. important Chair. to get I think it's important to understand the directors who voted on it at the Electoral Area Committee to understand why some of these um, agencies were eliminated. For example, Archaeology Branch, um, okay. there has been um, culturally modified tree identified on the property in question. Why wouldn't okay. Archaeology Branch be referred? Um, I want to know those things before we proceed. Okay, thank you. The CEO. Uh, I'm not sure what to say, Mr. Chair. We never eliminated anything. As I said, they're just we took out the redundancy. There's no sense in putting them in twice. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chair, I think it's okay. inappropriate for the staff to argue against the committee oh. recommendation. Director Lee, there's been no argument going on here. They're stating a fact. Okay, I'm going to call a question. It is now referred to East. By Director Lee, second by Director Abel. Electoral areas only. Is anyone opposed? Opposed. Director Anderson opposed. Carried. Back to East Coast. 
Item three, ESA development permit, DP1D21. Motion to receive the report. Motion to receive. Second. Second. Anything to add, CEO? Nothing to add, Mr. Chair. On receipt, I'll call questions. Anyone opposed? Being none carried. On Move the B, development B. permit. Move B, that the development permit for Zari be approved and that the corporate officer be authorized to issue okay. the permit. Seconder. Second. Dr. Wally, is there any further discussion? Call questions. Anyone opposed? Carried. Item four, fire protection service proposal, Duncan Bay, Grace Point. Motion to receive the report. Move receipt. To all the seconder. Saga, Abram. Mr. Abram, thank you. And anything to add, CEO? Nothing to add, Mr. Chair. Okay. On the report, call question on receipt. Anyone opposed? Seeing none carried. Item B is option three is outlined in the May 7, 20. Do want to report from the CEO be selected as the engagement strategy? Motion Move received. Dr. Tawali, Dr. Abram, thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none, I'll call questions. Anyone opposed? Carried. Item five, Refuge Cove Boardwalk Project. Motion to see the report. Abram, second. Second, Wally. Dr. Tawali. And anything to add, CEO? Nothing to add, Mr. Chair. On receipt, I'll call questions. Anyone opposed? Seeing none carried. Item B, the further report be prepared regarding the Richard Cove uh, Boardwalk uh, Project. Dr. Abram? Second. Dr. Wally? Anyone opposed? Oh, Dr. Cornfield, do you have a question? I did. Who's paying for the, uh, the, the report? Chief. Pardon yeah, me. Area C. Thank area you. C. Mm. Okay. Any further questions? I'll call questions. Anyone opposed? Carried. Item six, Sayward Valley Solid Waste Service. Move receipt. Dr. Second. Wally, second. Dr. Lee and CAO. Uh, nothing done, Mr. Chair. Thank you. On the report, I'll call questions. Anyone opposed? Seen and carried. And item B in the bylaw to amend the Silver Valley solid waste rates to ensure some revenues for the 2021 to cover the operational costs. Motion move, receive. Move recommendation B. Dr. Wally, Second. seconder. Second. Dr. Lee, thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none, I'll call questions. Anyone opposed? Carried. Item seven area D water rates, proposed bylaw amendment. Motion to receive the report. Seconder. Second, Wally. Thank you. Dr. Wally. And anything to add, CEO? Nothing to add, Mr. Chair. Okay, on report, receipt. Call questions. Anyone opposed? Seeing none carried. Item B, the bylaw to amend area D water rates to meet the revenue requirements for 2021. The 2025 financial plan be prepared for the board's consideration. So moved. Director Cornfield. Second. Second, Director Kerr. Any further discussion? Yes, Mr. Chair, Director Lee. I'll be yes, voting Mr. against. <laughs> I'll be voting against as I did vote against the financial plan and the perpetual increases throughout the five year plan. Uh, which are, have not been explained, justified. I don't think that it's correct to be doing this to the neighboring jurisdiction, and I'll be voting no. Thank you, Mr. Lee. Is there any further discussion? See none, I'll call questions. Anyone opposed? Opposed. Mr. Lee's opposed. See none, other carried. And I am seated, report be prepared to explore. Financial relief alternatives for users of electoral area D. Motion so Dr. Second. 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 Dr. Lee. Thank you. Any further discussion? There are none. Call questions. Anyone opposed? Carried. 
Item 8, electoral area grant and aid service. Motion to receive the report. Dr. Yes. Wally. Seconder. Second. Dr. Abram. And the CEO. Nothing done, Mr. Chair. Mr. Okay. Chair, I, I have some seconds after this is passed. Okay, thank you. On, re on receive report, I'll call questions. Anyone opposed? Seeing none carried. And Dr. Wally. Thank you. Uh, Edith has this motion. If she could put it on the screen, please. Director Cornfield, could you take your hand down, please? Mr. Chair, I would move that electoral area grant need service be created for those electoral areas that desire to participate. Second. Thank you. Director Lee seconded it. Thank you. So just a point of order to Mr. Yates. So this is electoral area that's Electoral area directors are the only ones to the vote, or do we all vote? Um, Mr. Chairman, this would be a full board vote because it's talking about a new service. Okay, thank you. Any discussion on the motion? I have a comment, Mr. Chair. Mr. Wally, go ahead. A, a lot of our grants and aids are referred to each one of us individually. I think it'd be advantageous to us if we could do this jointly. Okay, thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none, I'll call question on the motion. Anyone opposed? Seeing none, carried. Item nine, Cam River Hockey Club. Move for seat. Request for a refund. Director Adams. Director Evans, thank you. And the CEO. Uh, nothing to add, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Come on, receipt. I'll call questions. Anyone opposed? Seeing none carried. I'll move B. E. Thank you, Director Adams. Second. Seconder. Director Evans. Any discussion? If, if, I, if I may, Chair, uh, just as the Chair of Strathcona Gardens Commission uh, with uh, Commissioner Lee as the Vice uh, vice Chair, we want to just acknowledge, uh, recognize the, the great work that staff have done uh, with this uh, in um, working through COVID and maximizing the ice time and, and just uh, let the board know the great job that staff are doing. So thank you. Thank you, Dr. Adams. Any other discussion? Seeing none, I'll call questions. Anyone opposed? Seeing none carried. Item 10, wood chipping disposal. Motion to receive the report. Motion to receive, Jim Abram. Director Wally, thank you. And CEO. Uh, nothing done, Mr. Chair. Yeah. On receipt of the um, report, Director Abram. I have my hand on Yes, thank you. Um, I just uh, like to say that basically this has gone back and forth a bit. And uh, I think this is sort of a partial victory. Although a hundred meter buffer around a house before you can use your chips, that's kind of unrealistic. Um, many people don't even have that kind of distance from side yard to side yard. But anyway, it, it is definitely an improvement. And um, my thanks to Sean Koopman, who has arranged a conference call with UBCM, um, which was a second motion that we made. Um, that that if we couldn't get whatever we asked for the first time to uh, have a conference call with UBCM and the BC Wildfire Service uh, people and the directors that were involved. I believe it was just myself and Director Anderson. And uh, Sean Koopman has confirmed today that we will have um, a conference call or Zoom meeting actually on uh, June 9th, I believe it is, Sean, at 3.30 p.m. So hopefully we can get them to be more reasonable and allow, you know, a thin layer of chips to be used as landscaping around flower gardens, around houses and things. So it's, re okay. it's really the, 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 large, the large piles of chips that accumulate that are the worry, and I agree with that. But when I look around our island, and I know other places, Campbell River, probably Cortez Island, probably Sayward, 
there are sawmills that have um, wood chip piles bigger than my house, and nobody seems to be concerned about those self-combusting. So it just seems rather um, ironic that we would worry about very, very small quantities, maybe a pickup load of chips that get distributed across a piece of property. So thank you, Sean, very much. I'd like you to acknowledge, like to acknowledge you publicly for your help in getting this to happen. Thank you. Director Anderson. Uh, thank you. I'll ditto everything that uh, Director Abrams said and then ask of staff. So I, under, I I concur that the 100 meters is absurd. However, if we are to set that aside and people can either abide by that or there isn't follow up, I don't know. My question is this year, could we then, because it seems like so, could we then allow homeowners to keep the chips on their property, provided they some sign some kind of waiver that they're going to, you know, not do it right next to their house. Is there some way of implementing this provision this year? And if so, how would we do that? Thank you. I'll go to CL. Uh, I'll defer to Sean on that. Thank you. Through the chair to Director Anderson, I'm sorry to say the answer is no. We did not know that UBCM was coming out with this policy, at, uh, which came out on May 11th and on May 7th and earlier that week. We've already started the wood shipping process for this year. We've got the contract signed. It's starting in Area D on the 31st and Quadra on the 3rd. So uh, unfortunately, just the time is not in our favor right now. Thank you, Mr. Kilburn. Mr. Director Davis. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, I'm just wondering what the implications are for the village of Tassus. Uh, does this mean that it's still going to be trucked out of town or can we retain them at, at our waste management facility for use for landscaping in areas of town that are 100 meters or more from nearest buildings? I'll go ahead, Mr. Koopman. Through the chair to director Davis, so I mean that would be a conversation for village staff, which I'd be happy to be engaged with. Currently, the plan is to dispose of them at, in the Tassus landfill for June 13th in Tassus. OK, thank you. Thank you. I don't see any further questions. I'll call questions. Anyone opposed? Seeing none carried. Item 11, planning fees and procedure bylaw. Motion to receive the report. Member C. Director Hello. Lee. Director Abrams, second. Abrams, second. CEO. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Nothing to add. Okay. On receipt, call question. Anyone opposed? Seeing none carried. Item B, report bylaw number five being. Planning phase procedure by law 208 be prepared for further consideration and report be reviewed by the EA. Chair Abram, seconder. I didn't hear the motion. B. What did Director Abram say? He moved item B. Okay. Do I have a seconder? I'll second it. Director Wally, any discussion? Director Anderson, do you still have your hand up or is that from previous? No, that's up for this item. I'm, I'm okay. pretty good at putting my hand down. Thank you. Okay. Good, um, good check it. I, yeah, thank you. I honestly don't remember the substance of why the committee wanted to update this, and it seems like staff doesn't know either. In the report, it says, although not specified in the resolution, it's believed that the committee is seeking clarity with respect to matters as consultation, referral, director involvement, etc. Um, I don't know where that um, where that belief came from if it was discussed at committee and i don't remember it i don't believe that this is enough information for staff to do an update the update of the planning fees and procedure bylaw is a significant bylaw that covers a lot of ground and i think that unless we as committee members uh, direct staff more specifically on what to update i i don't know that they can do their job so i would like to refer this back to okay. east so that we can give more specific direction. 
Second. Okay, before... Director Anderson and Director Lee. I'm going to go with CL. Okay, um, well, I was just going to bring a little bit of uh, clarity to Director Anderson from the message we got from East was one of the, the directors wanted to insert director consultation in the uh, process um, uh, where it is not. So um, that, that was clear to me when we had discussed about it. Not that I support that. I think there's many ramifications of that, mostly negative, but the directors wanted to insert themselves in uh, the application process. Can I answer your question, Director Anderson? Um, I, I do think it needs more thoughtful discussion at ESC with a resolution that speaks to that, if that's indeed what ESC wants to do. So I, I my referral motion still stands. Okay, we, we've heard back to ESC for Director Lee and second by Director Lee. Call questions, anyone opposed? Carried. Item 12, Emergency Support Services 221 grant. Motion to receive the report. Evans, move receipt. Anderson, no. second. Evans and Anderson, thank you. Anything to add, CEO? Uh, nothing to add, Mr. Chair. This is just updating the financial plan to reflect the grant award that we've received. Okay, thank you. On receipt, I'll call questions. Anyone opposed? Seeing none carried. Item B, that 2021-25 financial plan be amended to incorporate 125,701 from the UBCM Community Emergency Preparedness Fund Emergency Support Services Grant. Motion received. Move receipt. Director Evans. <laughs> Seconder. Director Colburn, I think. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I believe you've already received the report. Um, if I'm not mistaken, that was already moved. Yeah, we're, 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 we're on B. Hey, turn your cameras off, guys. Okay, thank you. We're on B, we moved B. Director Evans, and I thought Director Colburn moved B, correct? Thank you. I'll call correct. question on, on B. Anyone opposed? Seeing none carried. Item 13, Common Action Re Revenue Incentive Program. Motion to receive the report. No receipt. Director Lee. Seconder. Second. Director Wally, the CEO. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I think Tom can speak to this. Street. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, unlike previous years where the board received a more extensive report, uh, the province has uh, announced for this year and perhaps this year alone, that uh, an abbreviated report uh, would be in order because of the COVID situation. Uh, the, the data that would be used to compile a more um, fulsome report is just not available for us at this time. So it is what it is and is simply for receipt by the board at this time. Okay, thank you. So on receipt, all questions, anyone opposed? Seeing none carried. Item 14, proposed cell tower construction, Cortez. Motion received the report. Member Seed Anderson. Second. Okay. Second. Second. Okay. okay. On receipt, I'll call question. Uh, just a sec, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Uh, if I could. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just wanted to mention uh, before we go into the whole issue, I just, I was called by uh, Shaw TV. Victoria uh, two days ago and asked to do a, a shot TV interview yesterday on the complete uh, Connected Coast Initiative and the relationship of the TELUS Towers and the, uh, I'll call it erroneous mapping, um, what kind of effect it's going to have on our funding. And I did an hour show yesterday at 9.30 a.m. And uh, we'll have a link 
very soon uh, to that. It'll be on the internet. Um, so I'll have a link to that and I'll forward it to staff. And if any directors want to have a look at it, they can have a look at it. Yeah. The, the idea of it was to promote our coastal connected initiative and show that the interference that we're receiving from TELUS is going to cause major problems for our program. Okay, super, thank you. Any else on receipt? I'll call questions, anyone opposed? Carried. Item B, the chair read a letter to Innovation Science and Economic Development Canada to bring your attention to the TELUS has not engaged in the Cortez community in a meaningful manner regarding a proposed tower and that the SRD opposes any permission granted to, granted by ISED to construct cellular towers on Cortez until the community has been properly consulted and supports construction of the proposed cell tower. Motion Some received. Dr. Anderson. I have a slide. Dr. Abram seconded. Thank you. And Director Anderson, you have your hand up. Director Anderson, go ahead. Thank you. Um, just a, a, a thank you to staff for being proactive on this one. Um, I look forward to listening to Mr. Abrams' um, radio interview, or sorry, TV interview. But what I would really like to ask is that staff, in the quickest way possible, put out some kind of you know one or two pager summary update of the relationship between our connected coast, our last mile, and these cell towers, because there's a lot of misinformation circulating. I asked somebody to actually pull down an article that was very well intended and had lots of good information, but not all correct. Um, but they certainly want to put it up again. And so I'm meeting with staff tomorrow to go over a communications plan for the, the last mile connectivity piece. But this um, people are very confused about all these different moving parts. So I'm just asking through the staff, it would be possible to put out some kind of press release that speaks specifically to the relationship between the cell towers and our connected coast and last mile initiatives. Is, is that a viable thing to do in the next week or so? Uh, if I can, Mr. Chair, it's viable. I'm not certain I'm comfortable doing that. Um, uh, just because you have to say a number of things that may engage litigation as a result of them. Um, so, you know, I, I'm not super comfortable putting that out there. Or you, you have to make a number of assumptions and and kind of, you know, accusations. And I'm not sure I want to do that. Well, shy of um, inviting litigation, I owe it to my community to, to write something. Jim has certainly been very vocal, um, but I don't want to put out misinformation. So is there somebody on staff that would uh, review an article that I wrote then? Um, yeah, I would. I'd be happy to, yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, I'll go to Mr. Yates and then Director Abram. Mr. Yates? Oh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I was just going to advise um, the board it may wish to dispose of item B before considering a subsequent about, uh, you know, staff reporting uh, or advising right. the community. So okay. just a process thing. Thank you. Okay. Dr. Okay. Abram. Yes, thank you. My, my point is on item B uh, for a friendly amendment, if that's acceptable with Director Anderson and the board that. Um, you're right in the middle, it says that TELUS has not engaged the Cortez Island community. I'd like to say the Cortez Island and Quadra Island community. So, Mr. Chair, both, uh, both. Yeah, we have already we've already written for Quadra. We had that I, it was either last meeting or the meeting before. Correct. So we've already addressed the Quadra issue and written. I said something similar. So I, I think yeah. we've taken care of Quadra. Okay. Well, I, I would agree with you. I would agree with you, Mr. Leach, that you have written specifically for Quadra, but this is now it's being advertised and it is the Cortez Towers are affecting the Quadra Island Eastern Shoreline, which is the only shoreline that we actually qualify for. So okay. it's going to have an impact on us. 
I would just yeah. like to have the reiteration of our uh, demand that there has to be consultation. I'd accept That's why I'm bringing it. I will add quad seven in there. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. Any further discussion? Call questions. Anyone opposed? Seeing none carried. <coughs> Item 15 City Camp River Development Proposal Referral, Comox Strathcona Waste Management. Motion received the report. What, wasn't there a, a subsequent? No. No. Move, move receipt. Thank you. Second, Evans. Mr. Adams and Evans on receipt. CEO, any dad? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I think John Neal will speak to this for us. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. It's Monica here. I'll speak on uh, on this application. Uh, okay. The SRD has received a referral from the City of Campbell River with respect to a proposal by the Comox Strathcona Waste Management uh, to develop a regional organic compost facility on a six hectare portion of land at uh, 6300 Argonaut Road. Uh, this proposal is to implement their organics management program, which will divert food waste from the uh, landfill for residential homes in our member municipalities. Uh, the parcel is located approximately a kilometer away from any of Electoral Area D's uh, boundary properties, which are zoned for upland resource use and are currently undeveloped forest lands. Uh, to mitigate odors and emissions with respect to the compost facility, uh, fabric covered structures will be placed over uh, those composting areas. It is recommended that the uh, City of Campbell River be advised that the Regional District has no objections to the proposed facility, subject to adherence with all setback and odor emission mitigation requirements. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much, Angel. On receipt of the report, call questions. Anyone opposed? Seeing uncarried, item B. A motion of the City of Canberra would be advised that the SRD has no obligations to the proposed six hectare regional organic compost facility. Mr. Chair, I just have Move a quick B. question. Are you on it? Director Lee motion. has a question. Oh, we haven't got the question because we're on B right now. Once B is put on, you can ask your question. Okay. Move okay. B. Move B. Second, second Evans. I think it was Wally and Evans. Thank you. And Director Lee. Onco mentioned that it's outside the boundaries of Electoral Area D, uh, which is zoned Upland Resource. I just wanted to confirm that because I, I believe when I read the report that it said that the property was within the boundaries of Area D. John Neal's report in the agenda. Go to Onco. Uh, thank you to clarify. Through the chair, uh, the location of the facility is within the boundaries of the city of Campbell River, and that parcel is located approximately 1,100 meters from Area D's boundary. If, okay. if that's helpful. Yeah, and they've already zoned it industrial for. That, so, that's correct. This, right. this application is for their development permit. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any, any further discussion on the motion? Seeing none, I'll call questions. Anyone opposed? Carried. Item 16, Regional Housing Needs Report. UBCM grant motion to receive a report. So moved. Anderson. I think it was Wally and Anderson. Two. Yeah. And CEO. Uh, Libby will speak to this. Two. Thank you, through the CAO to the Chair. Uh, since April 2019, local governments have been required to develop housing needs reports. The reports are intended to strengthen the ability of local governments to understand what kind kinds of housing is most needed in their communities. The Local Government Act requires all municipalities and electoral areas to complete a housing needs report by April 2022. UBCM allocates funds to complete the reports according to population size. Applications for the final 2021 intake are now open. Funding of up to $15,000 is available for each electoral area in our region. On page two of the staff report, you will see that funding has been provided by UBCM directly to the city of Canberra River, the village of Zabalis, the village of Tassas, and the village of Saywood for their housing needs reports. 
15,000 uh, $15, is also available for the village of Gold River and the Cayuca Chaclaset First Nations. The Strathcona Regional Housing Needs Assessment was completed in 2017 before the new requirements were mandated in 2019. Given this, it goes some way to fulfilling the needs of the Act, but there are gaps. The Act also requires that housing needs um, reports be updated every five years, so we're due. Uh, the re SRD is required under the Local Government Act to complete housing needs reports for electoral areas. The board may choose to uh, include other municipalities if it can demonstrate that such an approach will lead to cost efficiencies. Given most municipalities in the SRD have independently completed their reports, this could be trickier to demonstrate. The application deadline is June 4th, 2021, next week, and uh, following advice from UBCM in order to meet uh, the needs of the grant requirements, we do have a small amendment to recommendation two that I believe that Edie has. I can read it out if you would like. Okay, when, when I get to it, Libby, will you read it out? Sure. Okay. So on the report, I'll call question on receipt. Anyone opposed? Carried. So item B, that the application for grant funding be submitted to UBCM program for regional housing needs report. Move B as amended. And B is Kill. Seconder. Director Second. Evans, sorry. Director Davis, thank you. Any discussion? Mr. Chair, I'll, I'll be, uh, yes, I'll, I'll be vote Director Lee here. Yeah. Uh, I'll be voting against the application for a grant. I think the provincial government has got things wrong. I think the problem is mental health treatment and not just supplying housing to people. I don't agree with just handing out monies to, you know, through local government to deal with problems that are misprioritized so i'm i'm not going to be supporting it okay thank you Mr. Abram. what yeah thank you um i will be supporting it because basically we're asking for uh reports uh housing needs reports thank you. for the four electoral areas and uh, could include anything great thank you Director Anderson, did you have your hand up? I do, thank you. Um, and thank you, um, Libby, for the clarification of what's put forward because it wasn't clear to me how the original uh, recommendation differed from the alternatives. So, but I, my question still stands then, even with the clarity, is why would we not be applying for 90,000 and include Kaikut Chekloset and Gold River? What is the rationale for that? And perhaps if uh, the representative from the from Gold River and Kaikut Chaklaset, sorry, Kaikut Chaklaset could speak to um, whether they want to go the, on this on their own or whether there'd be any value and synergy uh, applying together. Um, I'm certainly in support of this in general and just wondering about the approach. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I believe in Libby, correct me if I'm wrong, the, or was my CEO not in conversation with you regarding our portion of the grant? I haven't spoken to your okay. CAO about that. Okay. And in terms I'll of get on. Sorry. Okay. In terms of uh, ahead, decisions, um, there are two main reasons at this point. And it, it, it's entirely open to have Gold River and Kayuka Checklist be part of the application. It will be slightly harder because we have to demonstrate that there are cost efficiencies. That, that would have been easier at the beginning of this process in right. back in 2019, and we could have done a regional um, housing needs assessment and updated that um, existing regional housing needs assessment. Uh, that said, it could be done. We, we, there are some logistical um, challenges that we'll have to make sure that we don't, um, we don't want to say that, we want to make sure that we are able to uh, put in apl an application for the electoral areas if we don't get the information that we need from Gold River and Cayuca Checklist. We would need some um, resolutions from the council. Yeah, I would, I would say carry on with the electoral areas. Okay, any other further questions on B? Seeing none, I'll call questions. Anyone opposed? Director Lee. Okay, Director Lee is opposed. 
carried. Item C, that the 2021-25 financial plan be amended if the application is approved for funding is received. Motion for C. So moved, Abram. Director Abram, seconder. Anderson. Director Anderson, thank you. I'll call questions. Anyone opposed? Seeing them carried. Item 17, request for economic development funding Pud Ryland hold each pensioners. So moved, Abram. Second. Dr. Abram, Director Lee. Lee, and the road CAO. Nothing yet, Mr. Chair. Okay. On receipt. Mr. Chair, question. Anyone opposed? Yeah. Agenda back up, please. We have the agenda back up, please. I'll call question on receipt. Anyone opposed? Carried. And B, that the board approve the economic development grant for the Quadrant so, Only Special so Interest Organization. Director Abram. Second. Director Lee. Any further discussion? Seeing none, I'll call questions. Anyone opposed? Seeing and carried. Under bylaws, first bylaw, 426 Area D Water Leak Billing Adjustments. Motion to receive the report. Move receipt. Director Lee, seconder. Second. Second. Director Adams. Director Adams and then I'll go CAO. Nothing, Dad, Mr. Chair. Thank you. On receipt of the report, I'll call questions. Anyone opposed? Seeing none carried. Item B, the bylaw 426. Being the bylaw to Second. Thank you. Director Lee, Director Adams. Those in the discussion. Call questions. Anyone opposed? Carried. Move second and third. Director Lee. Second. Second. Director Wally. In discussion. Call questions. Anyone opposed? Carried. Item D. Bylaw 426 P. Electric D. Water service rates. Bylaw be amended. To number third and be reconsidered. Move and adoption. Move adoption. Second. Evans. Second. Wally. Lee and Evans. Thank you. Any discussion? All questions, anyone opposed? Carried. Item two, bylaw 428, lost my broadband funding. Move receipt. Mr. Adams, second. Mr. Wally. Question, Mr. Is going to CAO? I have a question, Mr. I'll go to the CAO, please. Uh, okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. I don't have anything to add on this. Okay. On the report. Director Abram. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, to our CAO. Um, so with, with all the uncertainty that we're facing right now with the uh, funding from the provincial government with the UBCM report, mm -hmm. uh, that they're gonna take, I don't know how long to do, maybe a month. Um, should we uh, at some point receive more money from the provincial government and we are borrowing a set amount of money in this particular uh, bylaw, um, it's my understanding that we can't, maybe it's wrong on this one, but maybe that we can't uh, repay early on borrow. So if we were to receive say an extra $5 million or whatever, uh, that would lower our 17 million to 12 million. And yet we wouldn't be able to pay that 5 million back early. Is that correct? Uh, well, you got a few things there. One is we're borrowing 12 million for all these communities collectively. And City West is okay. making that payment back, but we don't need to borrow the whole 12 million. So if we receive money along the way, we just won't borrow it. And in terms of making payments back, um, again, City West is making those payments, but they can pay back the amounts earlier. Okay, so okay. that answers all my questions. Even okay. corrected one of them being the 12 million instead of 17. That's great. Thank you. Mr. H, you had your hand up? No, it's not. It's gone. 
I, I did, Mr. Chairman, just uh, for the board's clarification. Th this is not actually a borrowing bylaw. It's simply a bylaw that authorizes us to enter into agreements with City West or these various communities. Uh, there are provisions in these agreements um, regarding the actual um, borrowing of money. Those those are conditions precedent to, to the regional district being bound by these conditions, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, I believe Director Abram was referring to another bylaw, which is uh, still in transit, if you will. Excellent. Thank you, Mr. Yates. Okay. So, on the receipt of the report, call questions. Is there anyone opposed? Seeing none carried. And that would be the bylaw 428 being a broadband infrastructure capital financing agreements authorization bylaw 2021 be reconsidered and finally passed and adopted. Move B. Director Wally, seconder. Second, Baker. Director Baker. Any further discussion? <coughs> Seeing none, all questions. Anyone opposed? Seeing none, carried. Item 3, bylaw 432, 433 OCP rezoning. Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Uh, yes. Uh, before you go to receipt, I would like to ask that this entire item A right on through the rest of it be referred back to the electoral area committee for discussion. This is not ready for the board yet. And I would like to refer back to the electoral area services committee. Second. Referred back from director Abram and second by director Lee. Okay. Any discussion? See none. Anyone opposed? Carried. Correspondence. Item Thank one, you. logging of old growth forest. Motion received. We will receive. Dr. Wally, seconder. Second. Director Lee. Any discussion? Seeing none, I'll call questions. Anyone opposed? Carried. Um, Item T. Actually, I just put up a motion regarding that, Davis. Okay. It's in chat. I'm opposed. It's in chat. Yes. I don't see it, but. Oh, I'll try try again. Sorry. Under receipt. There you go. There if this isn't appropriate, we can go to notice of motion, but I'd, I'd like to put this forth, please. Okay, well, we've, we've already passed the receipt of it. So, a notice of motion. So, a notice of motion for our next meeting, oh. Director Davis. Sure, I'm good with that. Okay, so Director Davis has got a notice of motion to move the Chaskone Regional District endorse the recommendation of the Old Grass Strategy Review Panel. And I can't see the rest. And write a letter to Mr. the provincial Chair. government mm -hmm. for this decision. Okay. We will get okay. that off the next agenda. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yep. Next item, Discovery Islands Aquaculture. Motion receive. Mercy. To be pulled on number two. Sorry, what are you saying, Director Abram? I'm asking if you will please pull number two. We're on, we're on receipt we of, we're on receipt of, we are on receipt of number two right now. It has been received, Director Wally, I believe it was. So I have a second here. Is there discussion? I need a second on. Second. Did you help me out with the director Anderson and director Wally? Yep. There's, we're getting a lot of feedback. Uh, I'm finding it hard. Okay, it's on receipt. Director Abram. 
Yes, thank you. I just like it's this uh, correspondence from the Minister of Fisheries and Ocean to be um, examined. The feedback is unreal. I don't know what's going on here. Maybe turn your video off, Jim. Turn your video off, please, Dr. Ava. Was waiting for me. I don't know who was. Somebody else. Yeah. Still happening. My video is gone. Okay, shall I try squeaking it in here? <laughs> Go ahead. Before the squeaking? Okay. So, um, with respect to the letter, there is a paragraph in there. Um, I believe it's uh, right towards the bottom of the first page there. Uh, did I to Anyway, there, I'm not going to try and find the particular line, but there is a very specific uh, reference to funding being provided by the federal government um, for any impacts that may happen to either communities, I believe it said, or uh, possible worker, workers that might possibly be impact her, her um, decision to remove farms. So I want to just point that out that, you know, this is part of the decision is that they um, be part of the solution as far as helping people reconstruct their economy and making sure that people don't go hungry. So I think that's a, it's an important part of the letter. Okay, thank you. Thank you for listening. Okay, Director Anderson. <clears throat> um, thank you, Mr. Chair. The This letter, <clears throat> as far as I can tell, was in response to a, uh, a resolution that we passed in January. And so I just wanted to bring, uh, I'll read that for the board's uh, reminding and then speak to the letter because this is also relevant to the notice of motion later. They're, they're, attacked, they're connected, which is why I wanted to deal with this first. So thank you for that. So the, the notice or the motion that we passed at our January 13th uh, board meeting of this year said this, that the SRD write to the Prime Minister of Canada and the Federal Fisheries Minister to inquire why there has been no consultation with our Strathcona Regional District, which is responsible for zoning in our local communities and which decides location, zoning, and conditions of use of fin fish aquaculture in our region and why our expertise has been ignored. One of our concerns is that the proposal to close numerous fish farms without consultation with all of our local communities could eliminate up to 1,500 direct and indirect jobs and further harm the struggling economy of the Northern Vancouver Island and further that we copy our MLA and MP. So I, I wanted to bring the board's attention to this because we have indeed not taken a position on the, the nature of the federal decision. We simply wrote to them and said, hey, hold on, what about us? Why aren't you consulting us? And I, why I bring that up as really relevant is because as I read through the letter from the minister, uh, they never address our, our concern. In fact, almost the opposite. They say repeatedly that they will engage with First Nations and stakeholders and the industry. Uh, they're completely silent on whether they're going to engage with us. So if this board wants to you know, write back and belabor that point, we might consider doing so. Um, the line I think that Director Abram was looking for was the very last line on page two. It says, to assist in the development of the transition plan, Budget 2021 provided resources to support engagement and to pi pilot the concept of area-based management. So there's there's two separate issues at, at play here. One is, you know, why is local government com continually ignored? Uh, so I bring that up if, in case we choose to write again to the minister saying you missed our point entirely. Um, and then the other has to do with the, the substance of the matter, which we'll get to in the notice of motion um, and which we've received a few presentations on recently. Thank you. Thank you, Director Cornfield. Thank you, Chair. 
I guess um, along that same vein on page one, uh, third to last paragraph, it says, recently held virtual and roundtable engagement sessions with First Nations, the agriculture industry, environmental stakeholders, and other interested parties, and there is no mention of local government whatsoever. The reason is they don't recognize us as a level of government. When they talk to a group that's in our community, regardless of their affiliation, oh, they consulted with our community. And that's not true. And so I have big problems, as do I know uh, Director Abrams has, and we brought it up at the um, Oceans Plan uh, meetings that we attended and everybody assured us that they had heard us loud and clear and they continue to not address anything with us and i would think that another letter would be in order um, and in terms of their transition plan uh, in 2018 i believe it was they signed a co-management agreement uh, with first nations for all of the ocean on the Pacific, this coast. And uh, so there is a co-management agreement in place. Doesn't involve us, doesn't require any consultation with local government whatsoever. But it does explain why First Nations is in there when they're part of a co-management agreement. Um, yeah, I could go on about their um, ignoring us. The main thing is, I guess, is that when you look at how they are promoting aquaculture on the East Coast, and that is net pen fisheries back there, they are promoting the heck out of them. And if they have their way, the industry will move from the Pacific Coast to the Atlantic Coast. And they're promoting net pen fish farms on the East Coast. And, uh, and trying to get rid of them on the West Coast. So you don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure that one out either. And with that, I will be quiet. Thank you. Thank you, Director Cornfield. Director Evans. Yes, thank you, Chair. And uh, similar to Councillor Cornfield, um, extremely distressing to read in this letter again uh, that local government has been overlooked. And the City of Campbell River have put forward a resolution to AVICC um, that is very inclusive, that looks at um, First Nations and industry and conservation groups, but also acknowledges the importance of having local government representatives involved in determining any transition plan. And I think the lack of um, inclusiveness in this letter to um, specifically not identify local government anywhere in the letter as part of the consultation process or planning or discussion in terms of an equitable um, transition plan is, uh, is something that we do need to um, move forward with uh, another letter and uh, happy to share um, the other uh, rep recommendations that we have in our um, resolution. Um, again, around a process that makes sense, uh, that provides the amount of time that's needed for the aquaculture industry to develop their own plans. And um, certainly that would require consultation with local government representatives. Okay, thank you, Dr. Evans. Is there any other first time speakers? If not, I'll go to Dr. Abram. Dr. Abram. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, just echoing the comments of a couple of speakers, including my colleague, Director Cornfield, uh, who does attend the uh, some of the marine processes that I'm on also for the SRD. He's there for Campbell River. And there isn't a time that a comment gets made at those sessions where local government is left out that we don't speak up and correct them and get them to cower and yet as you see the minister obviously isn't getting the message uh, perhaps the bureaucrats are i know in some of the documents that come back they have now started to insert local government 
They've stopped just saying communities. That's been their favorite uh, tactic is say, if they say communities, they figure it's local government. And I keep telling them, and I'm sure Charlie has too, you can consult with the community as much as you want, but we rec we represent the community. So therefore, we're representing all of those other stakeholders, including the First Nations that are at the table. Now, certainly they want to have their own voice, totally understand, but okay. they are our constituents. So, you know, we do we do our best to change the system. It's the system that is fighting back. Thank you. I don't see any speakers on receipts. I'll call questions. Anyone opposed? Seen and carried. Do I have a subsequent somewhere? Hearing none. Item three, small yeah, community sorry, permit. I, I do have a sub. Okay. Sorry, I okay. didn't get my hand up quite quick enough. Okay. My apologies. Um, yes, uh, Chair, I do. I do have a subsequent that the SRD write a letter um, to um, uh, the minister uh, in response to, um, or sorry, the MP, uh, Honorable Bernadette Jordan and CC uh, as in her letter. Um, just confirming the important or the request um, to have local government be represented in any consultation process. Second. Okay, so we'll, we'll just have a as soon as he's ready. I, we can probably get that off the minutes if you want, Mr. Chair. So Bernadette Jordan, okay. CCs to everyone involved. Yep. yep. Okay. First, moved by Director Evans, second by Director Cornfield. Call questions. Anyone opposed? Mr. Chair. Yes. Director Lee here. I was going to suggest that possibly um, an an addition and an, an amendment to the motion. Uh, should be to inform uh, the Honourable Minister that local government is responsible for zoning of those uh, fish farm sites and therefore we do need to be consulted because we have yeah. jurisdictional control over those land use issues. Even if they are on the water, they are still under our purview and I don't think she understands that. I think we that was did. in the first letter. We did and that. We'll make sure it's added. Yeah. Just Director Cornfield. Well, just on that, it's called paramountcy. That's what Vernon was fighting, where the province overruled them in their zoning bylaws for uh, sheltered uh, mm -hmm. homeless Palmer. shelter. Yep. And it's the same. The federal government can overrule the province and can overrule us as well. They do have that paramountcy, and that we still need to bash back. So it's not just the zoning, it is the three range of things. We need recognition as local government, as a level of government. Correct. Thank you. Okay, thank you. On the motion, of being uncarried. Item three, small community paramount initiative. Motion to receive the report. Colburn move three. Move, move the letter. Colburn. Seconder. S sorry, this is a motion to receive A, B, and C. Is that correct, Mr. Chair? Just, just A. Okay, I'll second. Thank you. Any discussion? Director Colbert? Okay, see none on A. Through the chair. Oh, sorry, can you hear me? Yep. Yeah, go ahead, Drew. 
Um, so I, I appreciate that, you know, we are receiving these, um, you know, in, uh, in Terry Adam, um, these first two are, uh, essentially stock letters, um, that have been received by other municipalities. So just to bring that up, I would speak to see if, uh, when that time okay. came. Thanks. Okay. So on A and anyone opposed? Carried item B, that may 19, 2021 correspondence for Cortez. We received B. Director Anderson, seconder. Director Abram, I believe it was. Kill. Any dad, Director Anderson? Um, yeah, I've been hearing this is coming for a while from the paramedics. I must admit I haven't dug into it, and I really appreciate um, Director Colburn's letter uh, a little later on. Um, I, I share her acute concern, although I've not done the extensive research, I'm really just going on what I'm hearing from the ambulance attendants in the community, that this in fact is not going to provide us better service, quite the opposite. We've had um, a lot of people train up uh, under the the um, the existing system and get quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of training. And if they're only going to be receiving two dollars an hour, they're not going to keep up with their training and they're probably not going to keep up with the ambulance service. So this is actually a massive reduction in service as far as I can tell on the face of it. I think Julie nailed it. Um, and I would like to see it like to receive all three before I, I make a subsequent, but I would like to see um, some proactive lobby on behalf of our region as a whole, our rural communities as a whole, to the appropriate parties to see if there's any way of either rolling back or having uh, accommodations made for specific communities for whom this won't serve. I think their letter was very disingenuous to, to consider this a, an improvement in service. I, I just can't see how that's going to happen <coughs> on Cortez. Um, thank you. Okay, thank you. Director Baker, do you have a comment? I agree, <clears throat> excuse me. And I wanted to uh, thank the mayor of Zabellas. Um, her letter is mirrors exactly what's happening here in Sayward. This is um, this is not going to help us. We had a situation where a paramedic was coming from Vancouver to do some work here because she was actually getting paid for it, but now going down to two dollars an hour, we're going to have half our shifts that are not going to be covered. So uh, this is a this is going to be a huge problem for Sayward as it is for Zabellas and other smaller communities. And I just wanted to thank the mayor of Zabellas for putting that out. Thank you, Director Davis. Yeah, thank you, Chair. I just want to add my voice to this. We have the same issues here. We're on the verge of losing service. And uh, personally, I, I've never understood how somebody can be paid $2 an hour, which is far below minimum wage. And uh, it's going to affect all the small communities. So at the very least, we need to have a letter going out on behalf of us. Thank you. Thank you. So on item B, I'll call questions. Anyone opposed? Carrie, item C. Motion received. Director Colburn. Seat Colburn. Second. Second here. Director Anderson. And Director Colburn, do you have anything to add? Um, the letter itself is fairly self-explanatory. Um, I will mention that this is a pilot project, um, that this hasn't been implemented yet, that the date has been moved back now to July. It's been moved. This is one permanent uh, chief, chief under the SOC. That also means we, that we lose our community paramedicine uh, person who was also the unit chief. Um, they haven't heard back, you know, if they have the position here or not. And therefore, these paramedics are making decisions to guard the uh, livelihoods of their families. Um, they may be accepting positions elsewhere. Um, as which may be the case here. Um, I think it's a, a slap in the face to, um, you know, provide these stock letters, these mass um, distribution letters and say that this is going to be uh, a great thing for communities um, in our geographical area where our nearest hospital and our next nearest ambulance station is an hour and a half away. And I think that it's, um, paramount for us to um, stand up for the small communities that are even further than us. And um, this is going to do uh, a great deal of damage to service to uh, communities like Cayuga Chuckleset. And um, so I have done extensive talking to uh, KCFN, 
to Emily uh, Babchak to um, yeah, just trying to spread the words so that this is a, not a increase in service. Um, it's not attainable for some communities, though I do admit that this may be a way forward for larger ones. Um, I think that there needs to be a model that serves all when we're talking about a, a provincial program. And so um, thank you for the support that I've heard so far. And um, I would absolutely agree that we need to be standing up for small rural communities in our area and beyond. So thank you. Thank you. Any further to add? Call question on C. Anyone opposed? Carried. And do we have any subsequent at all? Um, I would make one. I haven't have it written up. Um, I I would move that the the chair request a meeting with our MLA and Ministry of Health with um, represent representatives from the affected rural communities in the SRD. Second that, Davis. For, for discussion on this issue, I would assume. Yeah, yes, thank you. Okay. Staff, do we have that okay? Yes, <clears throat> yes, we do, Mr. Chabot. And okay. certainly so, the chair's prerogative to write a letter uh, preemptive of that. Okay. So moved by Director Anderson. Do I have a seconder? Director Davis, I think, seconded. Director That's Davis, correct. thank you. Thank you. And Director Colbert, do you have a question? Um, I do. And um, I was just uh, as uh, I, I absolutely appreciate the support. I, I do think that um, at the, you know, um, at the at the will of the chair, if um, we could get some letters of support, that would be amazing. I know that um, some of the nations in the surrounding area are moving through their contacts uh, at at, from, um, at BCHS uh, at the Ministry of Health uh, or whatever that process looks like. Um, and so, yeah, just the, the support is amazing. Um, just to get the the note out. Okay. Thank you. Any further on the motion? Call questions. Anyone opposed? Carried. Item four, trail strategy for BC. Motion received. Move receipt. Second, Second Baker. Second Baker. Any discussion? Director Davis? Yeah, thanks, Chair. I, I just put in a notice of motion. I mean, we could run this through as a motion right now if if it's the the will of the board. But um, I'm willing to uh, put it forward to the next meeting. Do you, do you have a motion ready to go? Oh, it's, it's in the chat already. Is this the same one as before? No, different one. No, regarding thanks. this current item, trail thanks. strategy. Thank you. See, sorry, just trying to get my. Finger work. Okay, see you guys as a notice of motion. That's good. I'll take it as a notice of motion, then, Director Davis. Yes, absolutely. Okay, Director Adams. Uh, thank you, Chair. Just uh, we're. There seems to be a little bit of inconsistency as to when we are receiving items. Uh, there have been times where a subsequent has been done uh, to send a letter um, and other times um, it's notice of motion. So I'm wondering if just if uh, Mr. Yates or Mr. Leach, I don't need an answer today, but if we could uh, just sort of have some clarification at a, uh, prior to the next meeting as to what the appropriate um procedure would be uh well if i can mr chair i'll give you an answer right now it's always beneficial if directors have motions written up and they provide staff with them before the meeting i'm going to say things are getting better about 50 percent of the time if you don't i would prefer notice the motion it's difficult for all the directors you know as we have discussion on motions what clearly the motion is 
and staff don't really want to write these motions. We want to represent them. So uh, have if you've got them written up beforehand, get them into ED. That's been working great. If not, as Director Davis has done here, notice of motion in chat is ideal as well. Thank you. That's helpful. Great. Thank you. Okay, moving on to number five, improved internet connectivity. Motion to receive. So moved. Director Adams, seconder. Second, Wally. Director Wally. Any discussion? Seeing none. All questions, anyone opposed? Carried. Item P, members report. That's where we've put in Director Anderson's notice of motion. So this time we'll go back to it. Moved by Director Anderson that the SRD support the federal government decision to remove open net pen aquaculture from Discovery Island region <laughs> and that the chair write the Minister of Fisheries and Oceans accordingly. Moved by Director Anderson. Do I have a seconder? Second, Abram. And I'll go to Director Anderson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so I know that the board is very split on this matter, and I know that this is technically out of our jurisdiction. So to preempt uh, comments that I anticipate from colleagues that say, you know, this isn't our bailiwick, we shouldn't be taking a position on it, uh, true. However, uh, often it in positions where it's not our direct authority, such as the ambulance and such as the trails and such as other issues, we do take a, an advocacy approach uh, to senior levels of government and outside agencies. Our whole connectivity program has been uh, to, that, um, to that end. I know that fish farms are a critical part of the economy of, of uh, this region and especially Campbell River. I honor that. But what I'm seeing is that this decision is being made, has been made. I don't expect it's going to be reconsidered. And I would like us to be in a position of uh, cooperation with the federal government so that we can work with them to assist in any possible way we can with this transition in support of the industry, in support of our economy, in support of um, fish, uh, tourism, the whole sector. And I think if we take either no position or an oppositional approach, either strictly to process or to process and content, we put ourselves in a disadvantage. And I think however difficult it will be for members of this board to pallet getting behind this decision, I think it will put, a, put us in an allyship role with the federal government and allow us to work with them really hard to implement this transition as best as they can as we noted in the letter we just received, there's there's funding coming and there's transition plans coming. And I'd like to be able to support the inevitable transition that's happening. And that's why I bring this forward at this time. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Director Adams. Just looking for the question to be called, please. Thank you. Director Abram. Thank you. Um, contrary to one point that Director Anderson just made about it not being our bailiwick, um, we just said earlier, Charlie and myself, others, about how local government needs to be in the room. And we are in the room with aquaculture. We do zone aquaculture um, in the Discovery Islands region. Specifically, this is where it started. Um, the entirety of Area C, water area, water column, and water is and that is the bailiwick of local government. So if we okay. want to be in the room, we want to be in the room. If we don't, but I'm saying that uh, we should support this motion. Okay, Director Cornfield. Yes, thank you. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I will not be supporting the motion. Um, we have not been consulted, <coughs> have not been involved. We have not been engaged in this process whatsoever. We, it's them that we have repeatedly said we want to be engaged by them and they failed to do it. This decision was not based on science. 
the minister said so in her letter, that it was not based on science, it was not based on expert recommendations, but it was to obtain social license. And that was from the Honorable Jordan. And I use the term honorable very lightly. Um, and it is our area beyond rezoning, beyond land use. These people that are employed by the companies, by everybody else, are our constituents. And they're also your constituents. They are all of our people, and it's their families and their children. It's their people that go and use our schools that give us the quality of education we want. It gives us all our recreation facilities. They're the taxpayers that pay for all of this and pay for our salaries, and it's they're the ones that are being put at risk. And I don't care if you live in an electoral area or if you live inside a municipality, those constituents are there. And it's our duty to stand up and make sure that their interests are represented at the table and that decisions are not made by people spouting. How did I, was I quoted in the paper? Yeah. Um, mistruths, disinformation and doubt and outright lies. And it still carries on. And I'm tired of that. And we passed resolutions, uh, both at ABICC and UBCM supporting science based decisions and engagement with local government. And to date, we don't receive that. It's not there. We get it from the province because we have a community charter that says they're required to, but there is no requirement federally. And we constantly get into these things that go down rabbit holes that would have been, if they had engaged with us to start, then they would have thrown down the first branch to say, hey, let's work on this together and do what's right for your communities. But they don't do that. So there's no way that I will support this this motion in its current form. Thank you. Director Lee. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I find this motion in direct opposition to, to the, the original motion we passed in January asking to be consulted, asking local government is consulted, and then um, Director Evans' motion today uh, requesting virtually the same thing. How can you take a hard position, this board, on supporting the closure of these fish farms when you're still asking to be consulted? I think the two, I think those two motions from the board are diametrically proposed. I don't think we should take a hard position. We are not scientists. We are regional directors who, you know, have land use decisions to make on these areas and we're not being consulted. So I, I even find the motion to be, you know, out of, in my opinion, out of order because we are still today asking for consultation and yet Director Anderson wants to take a hard stand and say that we're supporting the closure of these farms. Uh, that's diametrically proposed opposed to what we've already decided. And I think it'll just make our regional district look, you know, like we're not solid on what we believe. Um, so I can't support it. Okay, thank you. Director Kerr to wrap things up. Thank you, Chair. And, and I also won't be supporting this motion. I do support though, the men and women and their families working in the agriculture industry. I believe that uh, Minister Jordan has been invisible since making the decision, and I call on her to come out from hiding and have constructive conversation with the aquaculture industry. Thank you, Director Kerr. Okay, I'll go to Director Davis and we'll wrap up. Director Davis. Thank you, Chair. Um, I certainly am in support of this motion. And I hear what everybody's saying in the talk about jobs and all that. I, I wish this motion went farther to include the entire jurisdiction of the regional district. Because in my community, we depend on sport fishing 
we've seen severe declines since fish farms have come into this area and it's been well documented the sea lice outbreaks the algal outbreaks that have just increased in intensity in this area and because we depend on sport fishing we are losing work here because of the actions of fish farms on our side of the water. So it's a bit disingenuous to say that we're losing jobs everywhere. Um, your actions here are actually harming us. So that, that's my say. Okay, thank you. I'll call question on the motion. Anyone opposed? Evans opposed. Baker Corn opposed. Cornfield opposed. Wally opposed. Kerr Lee opposed. Lee opposed. Adams opposed. Dahl opposed. Hungry is opposed. Two, four, Let six, eight. eight. I got yeah. eight or nine, so it's been defeated. Yeah. Yep, been defeated. Uh, no management reports. Anything in a new business? No. No demon items, no closed items. Motion to terminate. So so Second. Okay. Director Adam, Director Cornfield, thank you very much. Anyone opposed? Seeing none carried. Thank you, everybody. Good job, Chair. Talk. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Take care. Good work. Bye -bye.